In this video, I'm providing a quick update of my Fitbit Versa 2 after using it for about a month, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is Andrew from TS for Tech, and today I'm going to give an update. Uh, it's about a month since I got my Fitbit Versa 2, and I just wanted to give a quick update on the watch. So I did do an unboxing of this, probably been about a month, maybe a little bit more than a month ago. So I've been wearing this basically every day and every night, except for a few times here and there I forget to wear it at night uh, because I put it on the charger every three or four days to keep it charged up and then I sometimes forget. But overall I think this has been a good smartwatch, fitness band, all of that. It's been fairly, fairly good. Now there's a few things that I don't like about it and we'll kind of get into those in a second. But the one thing that I wanted to point out, and I don't know if you can see this at all, in this video, I'm trying to get it just right here, so hold on a sec. I'll have to look when I get this on the computer whether or not you can see, but there's a few just very light surface scratches on the screen that, that won't buff out. And I don't know how that happened because I'm pretty careful with my watches and all that. Um, I've had Apple Watch and the uh, Samsung Gear S3 watches and I have never scratched the screens on those. And somehow within this first month, I, I got some light scratches on the screen. So um, take that as kind of uh, as some feedback. I don't know if it was just a fluke and I just hit it against something that I shouldn't have or, or what. Um, but yeah, so there, there's, um, there's definitely, that was an issue for me. And then also, you, I don't know if you can see, like right here, I nicked the bottom of the aluminum case. Also somehow, I don't know how I hit that. And then on this corner as well. Again, I, I don't know how, how well you can see that or not. Um, so the gist of it is that, you know, I've got a couple little nicks and a scratch on the screen within a month. So, so there's that. Uh, the other thing is the band. I've been using this band mostly, and this is the special edition, and it comes with this woven band. And the band is comfortable. Uh, one of the problems that I've had, at least for me, is that I'm kind of in it feels like I'm in between two of the holes on the band for tightening it. So if I put it on the fourth hole, it's a little loose, and I put it on the third hole, it's a slightly tight. So I got a different band that I've been wearing uh, the last few days. I just got it off of Amazon and it's a little bit more comfortable, uh, but I've just put this one back on because this is the band that it came with. The other thing, some of the the edges of this band, I don't know if you can tell here, sort of getting a little bit frayed. Again, just from everyday wear. So that's something to consider. The ends of this are getting a little bit frayed after a month. Now this special edition did come with a uh, green silicone band that I haven't used. I don't really like the color. Some of the apps that I do use on the on the the device itself, I use the Starbucks app, so I can scan my barcode on my Starbucks. I use a Google Auth to get auth codes for two-factor authentication, which is nice. Uh, a calculator app that I installed that I use a lot, and then I've been also playing around with this Hooks app, which is actually pretty cool. You can set up buttons basically or hooks to trigger if this then that actions, which is pretty nice. So I've, for instance, done some things just where I want to do something and if then then that, and I quickly pop that open and, and use it. Uh, the other thing I've been using a lot is the Alexa integration, which is really nice. Uh, obviously you need your phone with you to in order to use that, but I, I use that often for a, a variety of different things. And then I removed some of the other stock apps that came on here, such as I think so there was Strava and some other things, just because I don't use them. I haven't really used the music aspect, the weather I use, um, you know, obviously just to see what the weather is, where I'm at, 36 outside today, it's pretty cold. I do also use the, the Fitbit wallet often at work. I mean, I guess I don't need this because <laughs> I usually have my phone with me, but there's a vending machine at work and I occasionally get a drink or something out of the vending machine. And I mostly have my phone, so it doesn't matter, but you can use the watch as well, which is nice. 
And then there's obviously tons of different watch faces and all of that that you can set up in the in the app. But generally, I've been pretty happy with this. Uh, as compared to other Fitbit devices in the past, I've used the Fitbit Charge 3, Fitbit Charge 2. I had uh, the Fitbit Ionic in the past as well, along with obviously Apple Watches, Samsung Gear Sport, uh, Samsung Gear S3. And I really do like this one. And, and mostly because I like Fitbit's app, right? I have a uh, Fitbit Aria scale that integrates really nicely with that. So if you, you know, you track your weight, uh, it's all integrated. Fitbit has a great platform, I think. We'll see what happens now that Google owns them or is going to be um, acquiring them. I don't know what that means for the future of Fitbit, but as it stands today, I really do enjoy using Fitbit devices and the Fitbit ecosystem. Now, I was going to spend a little bit of time going over the app and all of that, but then I realized that this is already getting too long, and I don't want uh, people to be annoyed <laughs> that I'm spending too much time on this update video. So I just wanted to do a quick summary and realize this is just my opinion and my experience in using this over the last month or so. Versa 2 is lightweight and comfortable, right? So it is very lightweight. It, it's got a comfortable band. You have many options on Amazon if you want additional bands and all of that. So I think that's really great. Uh, the battery life is really good uh, for a watch of this type. You know, I, I can easily get four days of, you know, constant use, sleeping, and, uh, you know, during the day without having to recharge it. I could probably even drag that out a little bit farther if I turned the brightness down or didn't use it as much. So that's good. Uh, the fitness and sleep tracking, very accurate. You know, Fitbit has always been very accurate uh, in, in their um, just metrics. So I think that's great. They have good integrations with other platforms, MyFitnessPal, those sorts of things. Uh, have a decent app store. There's quite a few apps and, and widgets and things that, that you can install and use for the device, which I like. And I do really like that it's Android and iOS friendly, right? So things like uh, the Samsung Gear don't really work as well. They, they do, I guess, on iPhone, but you know that that's always touch and go with with those devices that are made for Android and or made for uh, the, the iPhone. This works cross platform really well, and I would say the main issues I've had with this are things like the dings and scratches that I got, the uncertainty of how this is all going to play out in the future with Google. That might be something that you want to consider if you're looking to buy into the Fitbit platform right now. Who knows where it's going to be in the future? So that was a little bit of a summary. Hopefully that helps. I don't know. Hopefully it wasn't just me rambling on for eight minutes, uh, you know, about the watch and all that. And uh, hopefully it helps you in your decision making process or, uh, you know, anything that you are looking for in a fitness device. If you have any questions, go ahead and post those below. I'll be happy to answer them. And if you made it this far, you know, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. It'd really help me out. This is Andrew from TS for Tech. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.